Um, hello, uh, everybody. Um, today we are going to discuss the strings chapter. Um, the credits for the presentation for the slides go to John. Uh, he has prepared them uh, very kind of him. Um, so I have the honor to present them. And uh, the learning objectives of today are um, to learn how to create strings, uh, to how to combine them, um, how to separate strings into rows and columns, um, to measure their length, to exact, extract substrings, and to work with strings in different alphabets. OK, so strings, it's a scalar text, so a single um, element of text. Um, and the string R package is uh, the package in the tidyverse that does the work around strings and uh, other text processing. There's a cheat sheet uh, of the package, and um, it's very convenient that all the functions of string R begin with uh, str underscore because then in uh, a uh, integrated development environment just such as uh, RStudio you can start typing str underscore and uh, you will get uh, a list of uh, available functions as you can see here. So you have um, you need to use quotes if you want to create strings because otherwise you would be typing names of objects and functions in R. Uh, so you have to use um, quotes uh, and that can be double quotes or single quotes. And you can switch their use um, to, to uh, include quote characters inside the string. So, because otherwise, if you would uh, not do this, it would be uh, very confusing and you would get errors, of course, if you would uh, only use uh, the same type of quotes here in this case. Um, if you type enter and there uh, is a plus, then it means you did forget to enter the closing quote in case of a string or uh, closing parentheses or whatnot uh, in the case of R code in general. And this also shows that you can create strings of multiple lines. So they can contain uh, line breaks. Another way to include quotes and also other special characters, it is to use a backslash, which escapes the special um, character. Um, so in the case of double quotes and single quotes, if you use the backslash, you do not need to switch between double quotes and single quotes. So what you have here, there are there is one pair of uh, quotes that um, that comprise the string, and that's a round string. And inside the string, it's just one double quote, and it has to be escaped because otherwise it's confusing. It has a confusing function. It's the same as doing this. But it's more flexible because you can, um, yeah, you you can uh, ignore the fact that you would need to switch uh, quotes types, etc. The same goes for a backslash, um, which is a, an escape character. But if you want a literal backslash in the string, you can do it like this by escaping it with another backslash. And in the quotes um, documentation we can see that there are still other special characters which needs uh, an escape because the N, it's not just a letter. If you put the backslash before it, it uh, means it's a new line which you can uh, include in the string. Uh, a tab is also another common one. Um, and then yeah, backslash and the quotes. And these are meant to create uh, special uh, characters which you do not have uh, easily available, for example, on your keyboard. So, another aspect it's uh, how they are printed. Uh, so, we had the single quote, double quote, and the backslash objects which we had uh, created here. When you print them, you get exactly uh, what you had inputted. 
So this also means that uh, printed outputs um, can be recycled and can be reused in R code to just um, encode the same, exactly the same. Um, I see something in the chat, but it's a bit long. So, uh, John, I will skip it unless you uh, want to explain further. Um, there's the str underscore view uh, function from string r. And what that does is um, showing what exactly which strings are meant to be uh, there. So you will not get the surrounding quotes. Uh, and you will not get the escape uh, characters. So they will be the processed strings, which literally show what's meant by the string. So that's something else. And you have this similar thing with right lines in uh, base R. All right. So you could use multiple escapes um, inside um, this string. So actually what you see here is one uh, long string. And yeah, it's very tricky to, to escape the right characters and to maintain the fact that this is uh, just a single string uh, in such cases, if you would need it uh, anyway. It is possible and this is how it would go. This is the single string. It's a bit confusing because it is the code that we actually wrote, but then written as a string. So you have to escape all those special characters. Um, but there's another way to do it. And it is raw string, which is only available since uh, our version, version 4. And what you need to do is to uh, type um, the letter R, then double quote, and then uh, open parentheses. And then this is the way you can close it. So between the two parentheses, you can uh, enter the string that you want to show and you do not need any escapes for quotes, uh, single or double quotes or backslashes and uh, whatever. And if it's not, um, for example, if you want to include a closing parentheses, which would then conflict with this one, uh, you can um, use other uh, formats like this, and you can even surround it with extra um, dashes, for example. So uh, it's, there's always a way in this case um, to solve it. So, and this would make it much more simple because here there is simply the literal string as we meant it to be uh, without any um, escape characters. Well, that's quite convenient that we can do it. Uh, so these are some other special characters. And well, here we can see uh, if we type one and then the backslash n to denote a new line, and then two, you, you see that it is put on two single lines, separate lines. Uh, a tab is indicated like this by um, string r. And um, with Unicode, you can also encode um, specific characters like uh, emoticons and other things. With the um, strc uh, function, you can combine multiple strings or multiple, multiple character vectors. Because this function is just vectorized, uh, like paste zero, has only safe recycling rules, which are um, the rule in tidyverse, so to say. So you can just um, collate uh, these two strings like this, uh, or these three like this, but you can also paste together uh, a scalar string and a vector of strings, which then means that this first one will be recycled because this second one has a length of two. So you get back a vector of length two, which um, yeah, which, which concatenates these two um, parts of the STRC. So they really take the first element of the first vector and the first element of the second vector, uh, or and also of third and uh, further vectors, uh, for example. And then the same for the second elements and so on. 
So that's why you get uh, a single vector with uh, that length back. So it's, it takes it may take some time to get acquainted to if you didn't use it use it uh, often, but it uh, is very consistent. Here we use it inside a table. Um, and the single column here consists of um, yeah two names, Flora, David, and a missing value. When we want to um, yeah paste them together with the single string high, we get, uh, in this case, for the greeting zero, another vector of same length, length three, which can be uh, put indeed inside this table. And you get this result. So uh, in this column, and because uh, here we have a missing value, SDRC uh, will return a missing value uh, when combining it with this first string. That is bit, that that's its uh, behavior. But you can also um, yeah work around it with the coalesce by um, telling which which value should be taken instead of uh, a missing value so to replace the missing value so in this case coalesce name u will replace missing values for the um, variable name by uh, the value u so that's why you get high u in this case um, and this is just another approach um, but well let's skip it for now but it is consistent what we with what we have uh, seen already str underscore glue it's um, actually the functionality of the glue function of the glue package which is wrapped or which is um, used here and which is that the fact that you can, yeah, return the value of variables of our objects, which are strings like here, a uh, name, or they can be, um, yeah, a vector in this case. So, um, and the idea is that you surround the name of the variable of, of the object with, um, with, um, with curly parentheses and, then we get uh, the recognition inside str glue that it is an R object, which has to be replaced with um, the contents of the variable. So um, this is another way to say, well, you have to put together high with the contents of name and then an exclamation mark. It's simpler because you do not need to open and close quotes each time and add commas in between. So especially when you have to alternate uh, little strings with strings that are wrapped inside a variable um, several times, it becomes tedious to uh, do it with SDRC. Um, in, while in this case, you can just make one single string with inside it one or multiple such variables enclosed, enclosed by curly braces. And it gives you exactly the same uh, as in the case of SDRC, which is very convenient. If you need curly braces inside the string, you can escape them by um, adding an extra uh, curly brace around it. This is a special behavior, but it works. Um, up to now, we had SDRC, SDR glue. They were just factorized, so they they take vectors of uh, several vectors of uh, equal length, or that can be recycled to common length, and they return one vector of the same length. In the case of SDR flatten, it takes one character vector and it gives you back a single string. So it is a, a way to summarize a vector or or a column in case of a data frame. Um, and it's um, mimicking actually the base R functionality of paste with the argument collapse, uh, which then uh, takes as its argument the um, character that has to be uh, put inside. So when we um, make this data frame with two columns, uh, column name and column fruits, then group by name, 
So which means that we will have three groups in this case, uh, Carmen, Marvin, and Terence. And then we do summarize the fruits. We want to take those different uh, strings together and we will get this. So uh, three single lines uh, because you are single rows because you have three different names, those are the groups. And you can pause as a second argument the string that has to be go in between. And this is an interesting one because uh, I think that the paste function from BSR doesn't have it. It also allows to uh, use a, a specific um, string to put between the last two uh, parts, which can be different from the from the foregoing ones. All right, so this is a very neat function. Another topic, it is to separate strings. And there are several separate functions inside um, tidyr, because tidyr is the package that um, works on the data frame uh, level, um, such as the pivot functions. I believe they're, they're also inside uh, tidyr. And um, well, before we had already for going years, we had uh, separate rows and just the simple separate function. And those functions are now superseded by these newer uh, versions of them, which are a bit more consistent and also uh, I think allow, um, have more flexibility. So in case that, combined strings because we are talking about strings that consist inside them of, of multiple parts and you want to separate them. Either those simple single parts refer to one and the same variable, then you want to make the data frame longer by putting those single parts um, under them, under each other. And um, so may, make a longer data frame, which uh, contains just the single column, but then with the values uh, below each other. And we have two functions for that, separate longer dealing and separate longer position. And in the other case where the combined string refer to different variables, you want to split them into separate columns. And then we have the separate wider and the, um, versions of the foregoing ones. And we have also a separate uh, wider regex uh, function, which we will discuss in the next chapter. So this is a, a more special one. So the separate longer dealing, what it does, it's, um, well, here you have the example of the combined string. So the first elements, um, or on the first row of the data frame, we have a comma b comma c in one string. On the second one, we have uh, d comma e, and then we have f. And well, you say it's all about the same thing. It should go in separate column, in separate rows. Uh, and so we want to make the data frame longer. And you can recognize um, the different uh, values because there are commas in between. So that's what the Dillon argument uh, means it's uh, you have to pass the uh, symbol that is uh, defining this separator. So and this is the result. This is what you want to get in this case because it's all uh, different observations and they were just entered in uh, some yeah very uh, inconvenient way. In the case that it is it has been it is quite rare I think but. In the case it has been encoded so that there's no separator, but the width or the so the length of the string uh, or substrings is the definition of what goes into one row. Uh, then you can say, okay, uh, we use separate longer position and we define with its width argument how many um yeah characters have to be taken together to define one single string. So in this case, one, which means that every single character is put below the, the, the other one. So then you will get this, but you could also take, if these were um, 
yeah, an even um, length uh, strings, then you would be able to say uh, with two, for example, and then it would take 12 and then 11 and so on. With wider um, DLIM, um, this is, we had just um, spoken about the longer functions, but now the wider, which means that you have separate variables. Uh, so here we have, each time three uh, yeah three parts uh, separated by dots so this is the first string and the second string so you have three rows but also three variables instead of just one this is the first variable which is code the second variable is addition and the third one is the year and you can say okay uh, the dot is the delimiter and the i want three columns with these names and it will then split uh, and make a wider data frame, but not a longer one, of course. So this is what you want. But perhaps you don't need addition or something, and then there's a way to omit columns uh, by providing a missing value in the names um, arguments. So then you will just uh, retain the code and year columns in this case. So this is quite convenient that you can, with a few lines of codes, um, turn this mess into a, a tidy format. With separate wider position, you can um, do similar things when you do not have a delimiter. So sometimes it can happen that uh, there's an encoding format which combines different variables, then you can separate them and say, okay, it's always uh, a structure of four, then two, and then another two characters. And they define those three variables. And then it's with the widths, um, argument inside the separate wider position function. Then you get uh, what you actually want. Uh, it's a tidy data frame. What if you want to omit a column? Well, you still need to say that it has the one that you want to omit, that it has two characters, but by not naming it, it will be dropped. It can be even more difficult. For example, you have um, not the same number of separators um, in different um, rows, but you still need to make it wider because it refers, for example, to the three different variables, X, Y, and Z. And then you can add to few equal to debug, and it will tell you what is going on. It will tell you, well, look, I've tried to do to separate it, and here it uh, went okay, but here it doesn't, was not okay, and, and this is the number of pieces, and this is what I have left. Now, in this case, it's too few, so there's nothing left, but you can have the same with um, too many, uh, in, if there is um, too many parts. And there is a way to decide what to do in this case. So a line end will say, okay, no, if there's something missing, it should go to the front and then a line end will uh, make it happen. There's also other uh, ways around this. Um, for example, with a line starts, uh, you can do this. And with many, too many, you can merge. For example, you had uh, three parts here, but you only request two columns. When there's too many, it will be merged uh, inside the second column. So you can combine too few and too many uh, to get exactly what you need. And with debug, you can investigate uh, what is actually going on inside your data frame so that you can filter, for example, for uh, the special rows. All right. So now we are going to talk about strings uh, and how they are composed themselves. So a single string and uh, to look at how uh, the characters uh, look like. So with str length, we can calculate the length of a string, which is um, the number of characters inside a string. So what we have here, it is um, the first, so you can pass a vector, but it will then return a vector of the same length and then it says, okay, the first element has length one, second has length 18 because it's 18 characters, uh, spaces included, white spaces. 
and while well, missing value will of course return missing. So let's um, <clears throat> let's apply this. It's with um, yeah inside um, a data frame. You can apply it, of course. It's well actually several things are uh, happening here. Perhaps let's let's uh, do this in our studio and let's um, wind it. Um, let's let's have a look in our studio. Um, yeah. Okay. So. Let's just so we can uh, reproduce what was there, but what's going on here? So let's just have a look first at baby names and what it uh, contains. It is in a single year, um, or for each year and uh, for each sex, um, it lists it lists the names uh, that have been given in that year. Um, for firstborns and the number of people uh, that were given this name and the proportion. All right. So what we can first do is, okay, let's say we uh, produce a column, uh, which is the length of each string, and it will then uh, give you back the length of each name, uh, which is four in this case, which is nine in this case, for example. Uh, when we provide count, uh, for this length column, it will actually first uh, produce the length column and then make a count of the different uh, number of um, um, the different number of lengths that are um, seen here. So what you have then is, okay, there are 14 different values for length, and this is the number of times that they appear in this data frame. So, okay, that is. So there's a 4,660 uh, 4, different names or names by year, probably, um, being, uh, well, given um, and that's how the data frame is built up. So when you would um, add this all together, you would just get back the total number. Um, yeah. And so the, the total number of rows in the data frame. And then when you add the weight argument, what it does, it is uh, also um, multiplying by this column, which says as the number of um yeah of people that were uh, given so instead of just uh, counting the different names it is it will this will just extra do an extra multiplication by the number of people that were given each name so that is the number of people with uh, a, a name of uh, six characters so this is a very condensed way to uh, include these different steps in the tidy verse was not really, I think, uh, explained in this chapter, uh, but of course, this also uh, refers to things already explained in previous chapters. All right, the str sub function, it is uh, able to make substrings. So str sub, it takes a vector, which then will apply its work to each element, of course, uh, it says, start at the first character, but stop at the third character. So it gives you, of each element, the first three characters. But you could also start at the second and end at the fourth of, or whatever. Or use, uh, I think, for the start, a number that is too high, it will not complain, I think. Um, but what you can also do is start from the end and uh, go backwards, and then you use negative numbers. So this refers to the last character. This refers to the third last character. And then you get uh, the, yeah, the the last three characters of each string. Uh, and what we see here, yeah, it's effectively uh, the fact that you can use uh, a number that is outside um, the length. It will not complain. It will work. All right. So. Then we go into the um, 
yeah, the more specialized parts, so uh, you could say, uh, which you will also encounter, especially when um, switching between machines or be and if you get a data set from someone else or who has made it in a different with a different tool and you can get clashes with um, encoding. So in the encoding, it is how each, it is a mapping of how characters are represented by bytes, so computer bytes. Um, so they are just uh, numbers, uh, bytes, and so one byte stands for eight bits or two hexadecimal digits. And a character, because there are so many, uh, especially if you uh, take into account all the special characters in uh, all those many languages around the world, and you have emoticons, etc., you you cannot uh, you do need for quite a few characters um, more than one byte. So you, you can, uh, it is, uh, for example, in this case, for these characters, it's one. Uh, well, it is um, the byte B1 here. So it is, this is indeed the two hex digits. It is one byte, but sometimes it's longer. So for example, in this case here, we have two bytes. But um, the B1 byte, it's um, this uh, sign in the Latin 1 encoding, or the character encoding, or the, um, yeah, the, the character set. And um, in the Latin 2 um, encoding, it is another uh, character. So um, when the encoding is not set correctly, or the default is not um, the right one, you will get characters which were not meant to be there. And then that's a problem, of course, when you want to process further or generate strings, etc. cetera. Um, the modern character encoding, uh, it is UTF-8, it's the Unicode um, approach. And um, well, John, perhaps you can um, add something about the special uh, character. <laughs> Well, so yeah, I had heard before that UTF-8 is meant to be able to represent like any language. And this came up, um, it was on, around the internet and it was on a podcast that I heard talking about this character, Multi-Ocular O, that uh, it's in one manuscript from the 1400s and they had a... Um, O like character in a word and it means many eyed and so they just drew a picture but then that was referenced in a book and so it became like an official UTF-8 character and it's actually wrong in the current so the one that I pasted in the chat is is the old standard they're updating the standard because that's not what it actually looked like in the manuscript it's just it's funny to me that we have like an official character that's available on any modern computer to reproduce this one manuscript and well to be clear or to be fair now that letter is used quite a lot now that the internet found out about it because it's weird <laughs> so um but the point is that just use utf-8 and then you don't have to like switch between encodings for different words and things like that you can write any word I, i'm not sure if they have representations of sign language but other than that any any written were characters you can make, you're supposed to be able to make in UTF-8. Right, thank you. <laughs> but indeed it was uh, quite a funny uh, case that you have uh, put here. I didn't know it. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was funny that um, apparently it was the writer's attempt of depicting how many yeah. eyes the seraphim uh, they were describing had which is a mythical yes. figure or something yeah yeah it's a type of angel so yes seraphim I this <laughs> like this <Yeah>. something <laughs> all right so, yeah <laughs> okay so yeah, you can specify encoding using UTF-8 um, and it is um, what read R will use by default uh, when you read text. But in this case, uh, 
it is not UTF-8, and so you have to specify it in the local um, argument of, in this case, read CSV. But it's the same for, uh, goes for, I guess, um, yes, string R, or there were, I think, other functions um, mentioned in the book. I guess that, yeah. Well, oh, yeah, I think it's... Um, Till something, yeah, it's, oh yeah, it's also, Redar also has a guess encoding uh, function, which you can pass some texts if you really don't know the encoding, but then you're, uh, it would best be quite a long string with enough uh, cases for it to guess uh, what it needs, because otherwise yeah, this won't work. Uh, yeah. All right, but indeed, um, you also have the SDR view um, function, and I think also all other functions in string R will assume UTF-8 encoding. All right, so locales, it, a locale is the specifier of the language and optionally of the region. So you can, um, yeah, the, the specifier of the language, it's always two characters long, for example, EN um, for the language. And I think, yeah, I have been mistaken. This should have been NL underscore BE. Well, um, anyway, so this says it's okay, the language and then the region um, in, um, yeah. In the uppercase and with relation to string the locale uh, does, does affect some things it affects uh, how uh, chasing changing case will look like and it also affects sorting of strings because in different languages uh, well, different characters can occur but also the sorting can be uh, somehow different and while based R uh, defaults to your local uh, systems locale um string r defaults to english and well the fact that base r defaults to your local uh settings it's a bit annoying for reproducibility um across machines and operating system and across people and in the inter yeah, in the international perspective because the outputs can be different uh, depending on which system they are your code is run so it's better to have a fixed default, um, strict defaults, or an explicit setting inside your code of the locale. So string R also accepts um, an explicit locale. And there are many, many locale support which can be returned by this. Let's see, then you have this uh, very long vector of all different locales that are supported. So I think it's above 800 here. So it's a, a very long list. And so let's let's see uh, what happens when we say it's, well, here it will default to English and we in Turkish, we all actually have an I character uh, without a dot. And it, well, because it assumes English, it will not distinguish and uh, the uppercase will be just the same for both characters while in the case that you specify the locale, it will respect uh, the fact that in that language you have different characters for the uppercase um, versions of these characters, the lowercase ones. And, and the same goes for str underscore sort, uh, which sorts characters. Um, this is um, what we know for the English language. But for example, in Czech, you have a different sorting because the CH, it is a special character and it has its own place in the alphabet. So it will uh, be put at the end in this example. So it does matter, uh, especially when you are sorting larger data frames with strings, etc. cetera. It, um, and especially if they have special characters or even just because you did not um, use the default of string R and just used base R, you could get uh, weird results uh, in other countries, which you were not, uh, were not thinking of, even while you just use um, 
yeah, English characters, for example. Okay, and that was it, uh, apparently. Okay, and I see that John has been updating this, um, but it will... It's, um, yeah, it's still seconds. running. It's still running, yeah, it's normal, because it has to process all those chapters. Uh, yeah, yeah one of these it. days. Yeah, we'll, <laughs> we'll update that. Of course, uh, it's, it is past that chapter, but it hasn't. It won't show up yet. Um, yeah. yeah, strings are, uh, you know, useful and important, and actually becoming more and more important for data science. I think um, it used to be enough to do, you know, like looking for specific keywords and counting characters at at most, and uh, you know, it's more of a thing to treat characters, treat words at, or, you know, paragraphs as data now. Um, so it's good to have uh, kind of three chapters about text, really, because chapter 16 was a type of text. Um, so, yeah, good. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll go ahead and talk a little bit out loud about the scheduling stuff that um, we have the next two weeks covered and the week after that I'll probably take um, but I my family is going to be going out of town but I think after this meeting and so it should be fine for me to cover that chapter um, and then it's Daylight savings, I was hoping to have something in place to uh, help us deal with that so we didn't have to just skip the whole time, but it's chaos if we try to meet. So we're just going to skip when the US, while the US and Europe are out of sync w because all the different book clubs have people from all over the world and book clubs try to meet at the same time if we don't uh, fix that. So, um, so we'll skip the three weeks, unfortunately that we're out of sync because the U.S. starts daylight savings super early. Um, and then, yeah, and then we'll come back. But we have, we'll be talking about dates and times right before going into that madness. And so we can talk about why it's such chaos um, and hopefully be able to like deal with that sort of chaos in our data. <laughs> so then we can actually learn how to not miss the date. Or... <laughs> yeah, but yeah, it, also have to learn that like unfortunately people re you know use different days or different times for sometimes and it's painful so there's only so much you can do you can fix it in the data but you can't necessarily fix it in the real world um oh and by the way it should be fixed now if you refresh it'll say nlbe oh yeah that's <laughs> there we go <laughs> so that. yes obviously <laughs> um all right cool i i don't have anything else so i will see everybody on slack thank you very much Great. thank you did you type in yeah okay